This is Algebra 1, Lesson 16-9. Today's date is Tuesday, May 7th, 2019. <clears throat> I am recording this about 3.40 in the morning. I um, just want to make sure that we know what we're doing. So um, I just want to go through graphing each of the three forms because that's all we're doing tonight for the homework. We have one homework assignment where we have to graph um, a bunch of different functions. So factored form, something that looks like it's being multiplied. So one parenthesis times another set of parentheses, you know you're talking about factored form. So to solve this one, we're going to find its x-intercepts first. So I'll write down here, x-intercepts. And if you don't know how to do x-intercepts, we're going to set the y equal to 0. So that's 0 is equal to, and then all of this stuff, one third x plus 6 times x. All right, so which of these things could potentially be 0? Set those to 0. So x plus 6 could be 0. So x plus 6 could be 0. Or x also could be 0. From there, I'm going to solve both sides. This one means x could be negative 6. And this one, again, it's just x equals 0. So those are the x-intercepts. So let's go ahead and graph those. Negative 6 is right here. 0 is right there. These are on the x-axis. And I'll make that note as well. These are on the x-axis. So we have two points. We need one more point. And every single time that you're graphing these, you need the vertex over and over again. Every single one of these needs a vertex. So you can just kind of eyeball the middle of this between 0 and 6 or negative 6 halfway looks to be about negative 3 and yeah you're right so that is the x coordinate. So I can make a little tick mark here and say okay somewhere maybe height is here maybe it's up here maybe it's down there maybe it's down here I don't know but somewhere along this line at x equals negative 3 I know that that's gonna be my vertex if you can't find this just by looking at it uh, there is a formula I would like you to not memorize this formula and just try to look at it um, but here's the formula to find um, the vertex or the x-coordinate of that vertex if you need it this is just for backup so I'll make that note here this is for backup and it's you just add these two x's so I'm gonna say add this x so x I'm gonna call it x1 and then you add the other x x2 and then you divide by 2 and you can see that when we do that, we get negative 6 plus 0 divided by 2, which is negative 6 divided by 2, which is just negative 3. And that's why we got negative 3 here. And then finally, we're going to find the um, vertex, the y-coordinate. The y-coordinate. And this one, um, in two words, all you're doing is plugging in. Plug in. So I have negative 3, and I got that just by eyeballing it, but I have the formula as a backup. But I have negative 3, so I plug this negative 3 into the formula. So I'll even draw arrows here. Um, this negative 3 is going to be plugged in to this x. It's going to be plugged in to this x. So when we do that, I'm going to rewrite this, and this is now going to be f of x f of x is equal to one third x plus six but in place of x it's a three negative three so negative three plus six times negative three because that was an x as well this is an x as well now you just need to simplify so simplifying this a little bit negative three plus six is three times negative three times one third all of these are just being sandwiched together. They're all being multiplied together. Well, one third times three, that's, I can do that one first. It doesn't matter which one you do first. Um, one third of three is just one. I mean, they kind of like cancel out. And you're just left with negative three. You could have also done it the other way. Negative three times three is negative nine. Negative nine divided by three is negative three. But either way, this y coordinate is equal to negative three, which means the height that I was looking for, the y coordinate, was down here at negative 3. And that's my answer. Then you just need to do a rough sketch if you're doing it on paper. If you're doing it on Khan Academy, it does it for you. 
comes up through here, and it comes up through here. Make sure that this isn't too pointy, it should be nice and round towards the bottom. All right, so vertex form. You'll know you're in vertex form because you'll have um, a parenthesis squared and then with something adding or subtracted to it on the outside, like one single number out here. So different because up here we had two sets of parentheses. This one has one set of parentheses. And of course, standard form has no parentheses. So if there's only one parentheses, vertex form, and let's find the vertex. So the vertex is really easy to find. You don't even need to write it down, really. Um, I'm going to take, I'm actually going to label it. So I'm going to say that this, if I take the opposite, that's going to be the x. If I take this, I don't need to do the opposite, and that's just the y. So the opposite of negative 6 is 6. So the vertex is at 6, comma, and then I just take that number, negative 3. It's that easy. And I can even draw arrows to see what's going on. So this came right there. And I like drawing arrows in my notes because sometimes when I'm looking back at them like a week later, I'll be like, where did these things come from? So I highly suggest drawing arrows to everything. Cool. So from then, I'm going to graph the vertex. 6, comma, negative 3. So 6, comma, negative 3 is this point right here. That is my vertex. And I like to make my points nice and big so I don't confuse them for the, the dots on the dot paper. All right, so this problem is actually one of the hardest types of vertex forms because I have a fraction in front of it. And um, whenever you have a fraction, it's gonna be kind of difficult and you'll see why in a sec. So the general idea here is try to find another point. So because I have an x coordinate of six, Let's try plugging in 7, right? Just plug in a number right next to it. We'll see that that doesn't work, and we'll end up having to plug in 8. But I'll show you why plugging in 7 doesn't work. So let's just plug in 7, and we're trying to look for height. Maybe the height is there. Maybe the height is down here. Maybe it's way up here. We don't know what the height is, but when we plug in 7, we know we're somewhere along this x equals 7. And let's figure that out. So um, I'll label this finding another point. Ooh, and I have another suggestion that I've seen a lot of people making mistakes on. A lot of people will forget that that's the vertex. Let's go ahead and draw the axis of symmetry right now before we forget so we know that that is the vertex. We'll know that we'll flip over whatever point that we find. So finding another point. Um, let's try um, x equal to 7. If x is equal to 7, then I'm going to plug in. So I'm going to right here. I'm going to plug that in plug in. So everywhere in here where there's an x, I'm going to plug that in. Of course, technically it's g of 7, um, but that's going to be that the height value. So I'm only going to deal with this right-hand side for now. So I'm rewriting 1 half, and then 7 minus 6 quantity squared minus 3. So when I do this, um, simplification 7 minus 6 is 1, so I'm going to have 1 quantity squared minus 3, take 1 half of that. Um, next simplification, 1 squared is just 1, so 1 times 1 half minus 3. Next simplification that I can do is 1 times 1 half, which is 1 half. <laughs> and then finally, you'll see, uh-oh, I have a fraction and minus a number. This is why it doesn't work out so great. And um, if you're doing this on Khan Academy, it will mess you up because you're not allowed to graph halves. You have to graph lattice points, um, whole numbers. Um, but let's go ahead and continue. This is the same thing as one half. And I need a lot of room for another point. I'll use the side paper over here. Um, one half minus, I'm going to multiply this by 2 over 2, and I'm going to get, this is 3 over 1, so it's going to be 6 over 2. All right, and then 1 minus 6 is negative 5 negative 5 over 2, and that is the same thing as negative 2.5. So it would be nice, yeah, you could say negative 2.5 is right here, but it's not a really nice point. I'm looking for a lattice point, some whole number for x, whole number for y. So let's try, so x equals 7 didn't work. Let's try 8. So I'm going to try 
try x equals to 8. And maybe that will work, and this one actually will. So again, I'm going to rewrite the equation by plugging in 8. And it seems really uh, long and hard to figure out what's going on here. Like, it's very tedious. Um, but this is mental math. You could be doing this all in your head, as long as you trust your math skills, I guess. So if I try x equals 8, it's going to be 1 half and then 8 minus 6 quantity squared minus 3. And then from there, that's going to simplify to 1 half times 2 squared minus 3. And that's going to simplify to 1 half of 4 minus 3. And half of 4 is 2, so 2 minus 3, and 2 minus 3 is just negative 1. Okay, now we came out with a nice number, so let's plug in negative 1 here. Again, now I was doing um, x equals to 8, so at 8 I get the height of negative 1. And then from there I'm going to use the axis of symmetry. I'm going to count 1, 2, which means I'm also going to count 1, 2, which means my point, my other point, is over here. Cool, and then I'm done graphing. So my critical question for you guys is how many points do I need to go over? Obviously going over one didn't work for this case with a fraction of one half, but going over two points, one, two points to eight did work. Huh, I wonder why. I wonder if I had one third, how many points I would have to go over before I got a, a lattice point. Maybe you guys can answer that when I talk to you guys next time. So standard form. If I come over here, standard form, um, generally I want to start by finding the vertex first. So vertex. And usually when I start with the vertex, I want to find the x coordinate of that vertex first. Um, this one is just a formula that you kind of have to memorize. It comes from the quadratic formula, but I never had time to explain where, why that is. So sorry about that. It's negative b divided by 2a. So what is a? What is b? a is this negative one fifth. It's not the x squared. It's just the coefficient. And then b is this negative two. Uh, not negative two x. Only the coefficient. So I'm looking for negative b. So I'm going to rewrite that negative. There's this negative. This negative. Okay. Now I'm going to rewrite b. b is negative two. So I'm going to say negative two. Good so far. Copy down the divided by symbol. Copy down the 2. I'm just copying down the formula. Okay, now I'm going to write a. a is negative 1 fifth. So here comes a. Negative 1 fifth. All right, so I have a fraction divided by a fraction. That's going to be a little bit hard, but I think we can do it. First off the top, the numerator, a negative times a negative is a positive. So what we can do here is we can say negatives kiss becomes positive, so I have a positive 2. Oh, take a look at this. There's an easy way to simplify this one. If I have <clears throat> a 2 on the top and a 2 on the bottom, just cross them off. If they're being multiplied, you can cross cancel. So they're canceled off, and now what I'm left with, whenever you cross things off, you're left with a 1. So my new fraction, I'll do this in red, this is now equal to 1. All of that divided by negative one fifth. Okay, just make sure you understand that step because that was a little bit of hard math, but hopefully we're okay. You can rewatch the video as well. This is the same thing as um, one divided by negative one fifth. I think that we can all agree that this is one divided by negative one fifth. And whenever I'm doing division with fractions, it's keep it, change it, flip it, or keep it, switch it, flip it, however you want to say it. So I'm going to say that is now equal to keep it, change it, flip it. It's a, it doesn't matter where the negative goes. It can be on top or the bottom or on the outside. Well, what's 1 times negative 5? You are right, negative 5. So this is what I just found here. This negative 5 is the x-coordinate of the vertex, which means over here at negative 5, I don't know what the height is. It could be here. It could be down here. I don't know what the height is, but I know that the x coordinate is negative five. Now I need to find the height, the y coordinate. So um, I guess I should be underlining these to let you know that they're titles. The next title: vertex. We're finding the y coordinate. 
is a bad line. Let's try again. There it is. So this one is as forward or as straightforward as just plugging in. Plug in. So I have x is equal to negative five. This number is going to be plugged in to the value of each of these x's. So let's do that. So I'm going to rewrite negative one fifth. Negative one fifth times the quantity of, and then x is negative five. That's going to be quantity squared um, minus two x. So minus two, and then here's my x. My x is negative five. And then finally, minus three. Minus three. All right, let's take our time to find this guy. Negative five squared. Negative five times negative five. Well, a negative times a negative is a positive. Five times five is 25, so this is a positive 25. So if I'm rewriting this, I have negative one-fifth times 25. Okay, a negative two times a negative five is a positive 10, and then minus three. Now I have to do negative one-fifth of 25. Well, I know it's going to be a negative because a negative times a positive, so I'll put a negative right now. And then 25 divided by 5 is 5, so negative 5. And then 10 minus 3 is 7, so positive 7. And 5 plus, or negative 5 plus 7 is 2. And this is the y coordinate. This was the height that I was looking for. So the, if I come over here to negative 5, the height was 2. This is the vertex. Make it a nice big point. The vertex had an x coordinate of negative 5 and a y coordinate of 2. And then the easiest thing to find is the y intercept. What is the y intercept out of one of these three numbers? Yep, you guys got it. This is the y intercept right here. This is the y intercept. So I'm going to come down here to negative 3. And that's my y-intercept. Make sure that you always put a line through your vertex. That way you know where the axis of symmetry is. So that means if I count, I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And my other point is going to be right here. And I'm, I'm done. I just need a sketch. Ugh. I, I've drawn better parabolas. Let me see if I can try this again. Eh, not that much better, but it works. Cool. Um, the hardest thing to remember about this problem is the formula for vertex. But everything from there is uh, generally straightforward, just a lot of math happening, a lot of simplification of numbers. Cool, that concludes this video. Go ahead and write your summary, and then the assignment should be up on Khan Academy. And I think... so please be working on those. I'll see you guys uh, later today.